This is the Mosis Star Tracker. It's used on virtual production sets and broadcast TV shows all over the globe. But have you seen its successor? The Star Tracker Max. Why is it the Max if it's smaller? So today, we have rigged both Star Trackers up side by side to see which one is truly better, the original or the Star Tracker Max. So before we dive into a little bit of a comparison between the two, let's look at the obvious differences between these two. The easiest way to do this is to show the Star Tracker original right here as it would be rigged on the tripod and then switch it with the Star Tracker Max. In this scenario, we are dealing with a Blackmagic Ursa G2, which has a custom rigging plate for the top mount of the Moses Star Tracker. One inconvenience of the original Star Tracker is the processor, which finds itself on the bottom of the base plate. There's not a lot of other places that you can put this if you're sitting this on a tripod. I have seen people take this off if they're using a jib and have it sitting on the jib arm, but the biggest problem with this setup is its weight. Not only does it take up a lot of space on the bottom of your rig, it also actually gets in the way of a lot of the devices you need for your lenses. See, with the original, in this scenario, with this camera and this top plate, this is the only place that the star tracker can actually sit. And as you can tell, if I'm operating my camera, which in this scenario would be on this side of the camera with everything out and I'm ready to operate, my access to putting accessories on the lens of this camera is limited. And right now, all I have is a photo lens on here. Imagine if I had a cinema lens that was hooked up with a focus roll or maybe even with a zoom roll if it was a zoom lens. All of this stuff would just clutter the operating side of this camera. On top of all this, moving this rig from place to place is heavy. Cinema cameras are heavy, but this setup makes them even heavier. Let's compare that to the Star Tracker Max. This is what the Star Tracker Max looks like. It's very lightweight. Look at this. This is the camera. This is it. Just this little package. And the best thing about this rig is that it is fully customizable. You can move this and re-rig it however you want. One of the best things that Moses ever did for their system was add a rosette mount. And with the rosette mount, you can mount it here, you can move your mount wherever you want, you can rig it very easily. The only finicky thing that we found about this is that you need to make sure wherever you place this, it is ultimately stable and will not move. Because if it moves, it'll mess up the calibration of your tracking. Let's talk about the processor. Remember the beefy processor from before? This is it. Again, very mountable. You can literally do whatever you want. All that I did here was put it on a few rails with its little mount. This actually comes with the Mosis right here and you can mount it any way you like. This thing weighs like a pound. And just put it on, done. Now, if it's not obvious enough, my favorite part about this new system is the mounting options. Think about it. You're on a jib, you're on a gimbal even. You know, this really brings down the weight allowing you to do motion tracking in a lot of different scenarios, not previously feasible without some critical thinking. Now, don't get me wrong. There is still a lot of outlets that come with tracking systems. This is just the name of the game. And with the Moses Star Tracker Max, they all come in this dongle form, which are then brought into a cable. When you're doing virtual production, gen locked, everything's all synced up. There's a lot of cables going on. But if the tracking system itself is lighter and easier to mount and has more options, it adds a little bit of ease to the rest of the process. So in terms of form factor from Star Tracker original to the Star Tracker Max, I give full points to the new system. According to Moses, the Star Tracker Max is pinpoint accurate. In fact, Moses claims that it's up to eight times more powerful than the actual Star Tracker original. But what does powerful even mean in this case? The Star Tracker has a bit of a UI upgrade. Not this one. This one does. You actually can access a Star Tracker from an internet browser, which is something that you have not been able to do up until this point. And the last big upgrade that we've been told about the Star Tracker Max is that it actually has a larger field of view. Yet based on its size, it can see more stars. That's what we've been told. But let's see if that's true. Come with me. So here's our computer running two outputs. On the left, you see the Star Tracker original, and on the right, you see the Star Tracker Max. Now, they are placed a little farther apart here, but we have put them close together to try and test it out. Based on the initial look, you can see that right here shows you the amount of stars that the Star Tracker can see. This is a Star Tracker original. 
it can see 30 stars, and the Max can also see 30 stars. But on the right, it shows you the stars that it could also see as well, just loosely. According to this, the Star Tracker original can actually see five more stars than the Star Tracker Max. Star trackers are actually placed a little bit farther apart. So the amount of stars that this star tracker is seeing in this angle might not be the exact amount of stars that this star tracker is seeing over here. Let's just rotate the tripod 180 degrees and see what happens. 28 and 29, 29 seen by the star tracker max. We're gonna rotate here. Max seeing 31 and the star tracker original seeing 31, but it's seen a bunch of half stars. Uh, equaling 37. There's actually quite a lot of variance between the actual stars that are being picked up on the original versus the max. The original is picking up almost 40 stars, but accurately seeing 32, whereas the max is seeing 32 stars, and it's also picking up exactly 32 stars. So, after filming this video, we decided to send the video to Moses just for review, make sure we got all the technical terminology correct. And that's when they said, something isn't Right. We were confused. And we went back and forth with Moses' lead engineer for the Star Tracker Max. And here's what we found out. Our Star Tracker had an old firmware on it. And it turns out there was an error where they couldn't actually update the Star Tracker properly. So we had to go through a bit of a process to actually update the Star Tracker. And here's what happened. We put the Star Tracker Max back side by side with the Star Tracker original to find out that the field of view on this is actually wider than we thought. And it turns out that the Star Tracker Max can see up to 25 more stars than the Star Tracker original. So when they were in the exact same spot, they were both seeing about 40, 43 stars. In fact, the original might have seen about 45. The second the update went through, this Star Tracker was able to see 65 stars immediately. Okay, so it's taken a while, but I finally updated the firmware on the Star Tracker and it is now successfully seen 20 more stars than it was before. Crazy. With this significant change in mind, it clearly changes the way that we're gonna be comparing the Star Tracker from here on in. So let's get back into it. According to Moses, the Star Tracker Max is more accurate, but based on the actual responsiveness, they look pretty identical, if I'm being honest. One of our fears when we got the Star Tracker Max is that, oh, it's smaller, is it gonna be more accurate? And to answer that question, yes, it's just as accurate, if not more. So according to the team at Moses, the Star Tracker Max actually has a higher refresh rate. The Star Tracker Max confirms its position more frequently than the original Star Tracker. This technically makes it more accurate. So you can see if something got in the way of the Star Trackers and we covered it up and we let go, you can see that the actual Star Tracker Max responds much faster and puts itself back in place. Much, much faster. After speaking with the lead developer at Moses, we were told that how the original Star Tracker was built didn't really allow it to have any more features that you could put into it. It kind of maxed out its capabilities. But with the Star Tracker Max, they were able to build everything the Star Trek original has into a much smaller footprint, which means you can actually do more with the Star Tracker Max and there's more that could come with it. And that's one of the features I wanna show you. We got Moses to send us their most incredible feature with the Star Tracker Max. This is the Vision Max. Now, I've only ever seen this at trade shows, never seen it work in person. So we're gonna put this on and show you what it does. This is something that isn't available for the Star Tracker original. Now, what it does is it obviously makes the Star Tracker Max look like a big bug, something in a bug's life. If you were to take a shot out of an LED volume and go outside for a second or lose, uh, lose your stars, your stars disappear, this will use AI technology to track its actual location while you're doing this shot. Let's say um, you're on a volume and you have a jib shot and you're going into the backseat of a car or in the trunk of a car and there's no stars inside of the car. Well, in theory, this should actually help you track your position so that when you come back out of the car, it will pick up the stars and drop the actual uh, tracking from the webcam seamlessly. So now that we have the Vision Max set up, in theory, I should be able to cover the star tracker, tilt the tripod, and when I take my hand off the star tracker, it should know where it is positionally. So cover it. We can still see stars. I tilt it, I come back. 
It says it was de it was tracking estimates. Yeah, it was estimating it. De-initialized tracking. Whoa. Wow, it did it pretty good there. I guess my question is what does that look like with the frost on? That's a good question. So Josh brought up a really great point with the Vision Max. While in theory, it definitely works when we're viewing just the actual star tracker itself, what does the Frustum look like and how much does it lag when the Vision Max actually kicks in? So we're gonna try that out right now. You know the Frustum's working. We got the, uh, we can see the actual star map here live as well. There's no errors or anything like that. And we're gonna simulate, we walk outside for a second or maybe something is in the way. There's some sort of instruction we're gonna test that out with this flag here and see how well this Frustum works. So let's try it out. Imagine we're on a Veep virtual production set here. We get blocked. Oh, <laughs> it works! Oh, that's actually I watched it lose, lose all screen. Look at this, no stars, still works. Okay, th this is pretty, pretty cool. This is completely flawless. I'm bound by cables here, but I'm gonna I know. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one step forward. I'm gonna go one step further here. I'm gonna fully cover my hand over this and see what happens. Did you? That's zero lag. <laughs> None. There's literally no delay between it picking up its stars again after it's lost them all. I'm watching on the screen right here. It says there are no stars. It's still moving. Do you see this frustum? And then you can bring it back. I'm pretty sure right now. This is pretty awesome. It's pretty seamless. Even when it says though, Moses is unstable, it still works. It can see the object in the screen. It tells you that it lost its stars. And using its AI technology, its LiDAR, whatever component the actual Vision Max uses, it's pretty impressive. Overall, that is a great feature of the Star Tracker Max over the original because the original definitely cannot do that. So imagine the versatility that you can have on a set.